purge the Holy Spirit. You have no place. Holy Spirit, Jesus. So many times we make a schedule. And we don't include time for the Holy Spirit. That's right. Finally, when you let the Holy Spirit make those, those times, this is what you get right here. Sometimes people don't like change. Um, but that's how God gets us to grow. Break every the sin means break it. The reason I'm up here this morning is to give testimony. Bart and I was talking and um, this is a um, this is not an accident why I'm going to this church. And one of the reasons that Bart wanted me to talk was because I guess in Trace Dias I sponsored 165 people to Trace Dias. That's a recruiting thing. I don't say that to get any um, uh, any praise out of it or anything. The praise is in it itself. But you don't live here. What I think a lot of people come up to me and they ask me. They say, "How do you get that many people to go to an event like that?" And you know, I, I gave it a lot of thought, and God really laid it on me because I think we need this in this church. And that is, um, we need people to go out and bring other people in here. Now, in recruiting, so many people think that you just walk out of here and you go ask somebody to come to your church. You know, but that's not how it's done. It's, you don't go out and say, hey, will you come to my church this Sunday? Sometimes that works. But the way you really get people is to be able to tell them why you go to this church. Okay? And I can tell you why I go to this church. And I tell you, it didn't start off. Um, it didn't start off good. I was not a friend of Pastor Hart. I really wasn't. I, didn't, I thought he was, I mean, and, I, and I'm going to just be honest with you, I thought he was a snotty-nosed brat. He knows this. This is, no, this is not, nothing new to him right there. My wife used to tell me that um, he uh, and Sonia were in the food business, and I knew what the food business was about because I'm greasy all the time, you know, grilling and doing all this. And I look over at Pastor Bart and he's in a suit and tie. And I'm going, yeah, it's not the same food business I'm in. <laughs> you know, well, I'm going to tell you right now, I was wrong, very wrong. I mean, any of you been around Pastor Bart, you know that, I mean, it doesn't matter what he has on. He'll get in that grease just like it with the rest of us. And that, and that really meant a lot to me because the church, some of the churches, and I'm not trying to talk them down to build us up, but I, but some of the other churches that I went to were, um, uh, they were self-serving. And, the, and, you know, they were self-serving. The, the, the last church I went to was, you know, I cooked every Wednesday night for fundraisers and stuff. And and it was it, it, it was just a self-serving church. And um, uh, there was things I loved about it and things I didn't. But when I, when I say I love this right here, I have to tell you that it, it was learned, you know, you have to be careful when you tell your pastor, um, pray for somebody because they're in the hospital. Cheryl and I learned that a, a long time ago because it was a friend of a friend of a friend that was in the hospital in Nashville and they lived out of town. And um, Cheryl and I said, hey, pray for so-and-so. And then Bart called us about 10.30 or 11 at night and said, um, he goes, what room are they in? You know, I can't find them. And we were going, oh, man, we don't even know who they are, Bart. You know, it just said pray for them, you know. And so you have to be really, really, really careful. And then, you know, a lot of you guys know about One Night with the King um, that, that we did. You know, I have to tell you, God laid it on my heart um, to do something different. 
and uh, you know we feed the five course steak dinner to the homeless people dress up in tuxedos and 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 or white shirt and you know black tie and we go and feed them but you know uh, I, I hit this little lull in, in, in that ministry. I was really wanting it to take off real big, and then we kind of um, lost an area to do it. And do you know Pastor Bark went and he knocked on church's doors to find where we're doing this now? You know, I get a lot of people give me the praise for, you know, God talking to me, but you know what? Behind the scenes, you know, my pastor didn't allow one night with the king to die down. I respect Pastor Bart. And, um, and, you know, I, I want to encourage every one of you on a recruiting club because I find out how many people don't know how to recruit when it comes natural to me. It's what I do for a living. We have an agency and I, and, and I recruit. And so all my life I've been recruiting. And you have to tell people with a passion. And if you don't know why you're going to this church, then that's what you need to start with. Write down the things that, the, the reasons why. Write them down so that you'll remember that when you're talking to people, and it doesn't matter whether they're going to church somewhere else right now because as we all know that the, the that people get wounded they get wounded and when they come out of a church and i'm not saying this for any reason i'm just saying that 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 when you um when you talk to people and show the love that you have for your church they will come and if this time next year you know it ought it the, the, every seat in here should be packed amen but it starts with you telling people how much and why you go to church here. I mean, we have people all in this church that are driving a long distance to get here. I mean, they're, they're passing churches all the way here. So people are looking for a church like this. And they just need you to tell them why. And when you tell them why, you know, and it, it, then then they get excited. And when something happens to when they say they don't want to go to that church anymore, they're going to say, so what time does your service start? Yeah. And if we all said to do two people this year, that's not very many. Two people. Look, count the people. And, 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 and that would be three <laughs> times the amount of people that we have in here today. It would be, it would be great. That's the way they could see what we do, that we, that church comes before church. It's not always just about preaching. Now, I know Pastor Bart is, there's just, you know, and I know of a lot of stuff. I sit on the board and, and, and I know of a lot of things that he does. And so I don't want to leave her out at all that, that people don't even recognize. And those that are close to him know that. We need to help them by bringing other people in here. We need to sponsor. I want everybody to make that a goal and in in, in, to go out and just tell people why you love this church. Yes. Now, one thing I can say, he's not changed a bit in 50, what, 60 years? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I was look. I was looking at his. I was looking at his baby picture, and um, uh, uh, and, I was in, and he has not changed a bit. You guys have to. <laughs> now, for for those of you who um, don't go to church here, the ones that go here, I don't have to explain this. He picks on me all the time, and I'm, and I'm getting him back right there. But tell me that doesn't look like him. What? <laughs> Let's do it as a team. You know, I have to say, when I first got up here this time, because I make no bones about it, I don't, I don't care to be up on the front part. But, but I have to say that it didn't bother me near as bad today because I was talking about something that I know. And... Um, and, and, and that that this is this is a great church, and we need Amen. to go tell we need to go tell people about it. We need to tell them why we love it. Okay, love y'all.